Mexican man, Chinese man. I, I, look, I talked to some white men. Right, right. And, and, what, they, and they feel like. What they, they feel like? They feel like Jacob and his mother mm -hmm. participated in deception. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they always say that. Always yeah. Say that. yeah, they always go there. And it's funny that they say that because. At the end of the day, in Genesis, it was already prophesied that that was going to happen. Hey, yeah. he, he ordained that from the Most High. The Most High ordained that from the beginning. Ordained what? Yeah, like, for Jacob to get the kingdom of heaven and Esau to be eradicated out of the face of the earth. Did you know that? You can read that in Obadiah. Yeah. They're going to be eradicated out of the face of the earth. You know what eradicate means, right? Yeah. You will not ever see a white man ever again. So-called white man. So-called. Because they're not white. We, we got... So-called yeah. white man, Chinese man. I, I, look, I talked to some white men. Right, right. And, and, what, they, and they feel like... What they, they feel like? They feel like Jacob and his mother mm -hmm. participated in deception. Oh, yeah, they always, they always say that. Always yeah. Say that. yeah, they always go there. And it's funny that they say that because at the end of the day in Genesis, it was already prophesied that that was going to happen. Yeah. He, he ordained that from the Most High. The Most High ordained that from the beginning. Ordained what? Yeah, like, for... Jacob to get the kingdom of heaven and Esau to be eradicated out of the face of the earth. Did you know that? You can read that in Obadiah. <clears throat> Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned their truth from through the spirit and power. Of Yahweh Bahashim El Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much, you know, a lot of people, they don't understand that predestination is in the scriptures. All of your actions, your thoughts, what you're going to pray for, you know, um, the good, the bad, the ugly you go through while you're alive. It was already predetermined, meaning it was already preordained, you know, before you even came into the world. All right. Because all creation does the will of the heavenly father, Yahweh, whether it be on the right hand or the left hand. Everybody has their lot. All right. So I'm going to show you that, yeah, it was predestined that the so-called white man would um, sell his birthright, which really never really belonged to him anyway. All right. The scriptures tell you Esau despised his birthright. He didn't care about his birthright. He willingly handed it over and he swore by an oath when he traded it. All right. For that red lentil stew. He traded it. All right. For the, um, the birthright. He sold his birthright to Jacob willingly. He willingly did that. You know, Jacob didn't have like no sword to his head or nothing. Oh, give me the birthright. Nah, he willingly just handed it over. So I'm going to show you that. So now let's read it real quick, dealing with um, predestination. So this is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, according as he have chosen us, the elect of the nation of Israel, in him, right, the him is Yehoshua, before the foundation of the world. So before the earth, the galaxies, before all of this was created, the heavenly father, he already knew who the elect was going to be. Because you can read about that. Matter of fact, let me just get there real quick. In John chapter 10, right? This is John chapter 10 and verse, let me see. Yeah, John chapter 10, I'm going to start at 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice. And who's the Lord's sheep? The elect of the nation of Israel. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me, right? And this is why we follow the apostles, you know, the elders, bishops, and the men of Great Millstone, as well as the men in like mind. Why? Because through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, all right, the Lord is speaking through these men through Yahweh Shai, all right? So that's why we follow them, because who's the voice? The prophets. So it says, I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, right? Eternal life meaning we're never going to perish, we're going to be immortal. Why? Because these vile earthly bodies that we have, we're going to be changed out of these bodies. And we're going to be able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments once we're changed into those spiritual bodies. All right? Or quote unquote extraterrestrial. It says, and they shall never perish, meaning we're never going to die because we're going to be immortal. Because the law, statutes, and commandments is going to be programmed within our inward parts. 
So since that's going to happen, that's going to make our kingdom an everlasting kingdom because the people that's ruling in the kingdom of heaven is going to be immortal, right? It says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So no matter what the elect of the nation of Israel go through, all right, going through the trials and tribulations, you know, being rejected by the world or whatever false, you know, accusations come up against them, you can't break their faith. No matter who you are, you don't determine who's a part of the elect. You know, that's already predetermined by the heavenly father, Yahweh. All right. It says, my father, which is Yahweh, which gave them me, right? The elect of the nation of Israel, the first fruits, first spirits created. It says, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand, period. All right. So now let's go back. It says on Ephesians 1 and 4, it says, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So here these people coming, trying to accuse our forefather Jacob that he stole the birthright. I'm going to show you that Jacob didn't steal anything. All right. Continuing on. Verse 5, it says, having predestinated us. Let's go into the word predestinated in the Greek. Strong's G, 4309. Praarizo. Praarizo. It says to predetermine, decide beforehand. So before the earth was created, the Heavenly Father already told you, Habashai, these first fruits, these spirits right here, they're going to be a part of the elect. They're going to always serve you, Right. It says in the New Testament of the Most High decreeing from eternity to foreordain a point beforehand. So the Most High appointed beforehand that Esau would sell the birthright because ultimately it never really belonged to him. But he sold the birthright. All right. The right of the firstborn son that gets everything. So he, he sold that. I'm going to show you. So now let's go back. It says unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Mashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Right? So the reason why I read this is because everything that Esau did, everything that Jacob did, it was um, appointed beforehand. It was predestinated. All right? The actions, your thoughts, everything you do, your whole life is already predetermined. It's already predestinated. All your actions you're going to do, how you're going to blink. When you're going to sneeze, everything is predestinated. It's already predetermined. All right. So now we got that out the way. Let's read this in the NLT. This is Genesis chapter 25 and verse 29. And as you can see here, look at the precept that's up there. Hebrews 12 and 16. Because ultimately, if Jacob stole the blessing, when Esau wanted it back, how come he was rejected by the Heavenly Father? This is Genesis 25 and 29. One day, and this is the NLT. One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied, but trade me your rights as the firstborn. So how the hell did Jacob steal a blessing? It's, it's an exchange going on, right? It says, look, this is Esau talking, right? The, the forefather of these so-called white people whose line goes back to Edom. The so-called white man is sea line. They are the Edomites. They are descendants of Esau, whose name was changed to Edom. All right? These central bankers, these J-E-W-S's, all right? Your forefather is Esau. You're not Jacob. You stole our identity. You stole our homeland. Continuing on. It says, look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, first, you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath. This is what your forefather did. This is he willingly did this. Ain't nobody have no sword to his neck or anything like that. Your forefather sold the birthright which had never belonged to them anyway. It says, but Jacob said, first, you must swear that your birthright is mine. 
So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. So it was an even exchange. Esau willingly swore by an oath that the birthright is no longer mine. It belongs to my younger brother Jacob. Come on, man. I'm going to read it again. Genesis 25 and 34. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate the meal, then got up and left. He showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn. Now, when you read that in the KJV, it says what? Genesis 25 and 34, King James Version. It says, then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He didn't want it. He didn't see it as anything important. He didn't care. All right. So why are these people getting mad at us? Get mad at your forefather for making a, a stupid mistake. Now, this is Hebrews 12 and 16. So if Jacob stole a birthright, explain this. Hebrews 12 and 16. It says, least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one more so of me sold his birthright. And he swore by an oath that this is no longer mine. This belongs to my brother Jacob. So how the hell are you going to steal something that's not yours no more? Your forefather swore by an oath that this birthright is no longer mine. It belongs to Jacob. We should be mad at you for stealing our identity and stealing our land. Continuing on. It says, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. All right. Who rejected him? The Most High Yahweh. He rejected Esau of getting that birthright back. Why? Because it don't belong to you anymore. You swore by an oath that this birthright belongs to the younger brother Jacob at the time. All right. And it still belongs to us. It says, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So look, you you so you Edomites, the so-called white man in sea line, all right, you dumbass Christians, read the scriptures. All right. Stop saying that we force prophets, we this and that, we teach hate. Read the scripture for what it says. And then you're gonna come to the understanding that Esau, he swore by an oath and he willingly Gave the birthright over. It's not his no more. It belongs to Jacob. The Most High is only dealing with Jacob. All right. He's only dealing with the Israelites. The Israelites is who chose the sea line. The Israelites is going to receive salvation. Rulership in the kingdom of heaven belongs to the Israelites. It don't belong to you either. Point blank period. All right. So Lord willing, you was edified by the lesson. Shalom.